Hello, hello, CK here, and today I've got a quick little topic, quick little video really, and it's something that's been bugging me for quite a while, and I just thought, why not? Why not do a little bit of video? And hopefully this doesn't come across as um, you know me being a hypocrite by actual complaining about this, because I don't think it really is. Um, I just had a big issue with um, rage baiting that you see everyone see online pretty much, mostly on Twitter, a few bits here and there and even on youtube in some ways and i kind of just want to go over it and why i don't quite like it <laughs> which everyone's you know right to their opinion and that and uh, you know sometimes it is sort of correct where but a lot of times it just seems like it's more like bad characters trying to make a profit out of people just getting triggered and just going what the hell is going on so i kind of just wanted to point out like maybe two maybe three examples and hopefully I can remember the third example because I've got two in my head right now. <laughs> I did have three, but now I've forgotten them. First example, um, I'm like a football support, well, soccer, you know, for the Americans and that. And um, I follow like Manchester United, you know, we just had like a bad loss. And we just had a really ridiculous penalty, like given against us by the referee. Like, it, it, like the referee took like 10 minutes and looked at this recording, so we use VAR at the moment, which is like virtual, like some sort of nonsense that's meant to help, even though our refs are the only ones that can seem to not, you know, fathom how it works, and, you know, clear and obvious. Um, so clear and obvious, let me give, a, give an example for clear and obvious. Clear and obvious is when you've looked at this recording, you've seen from the, the view and that, and gone, yeah, that's a stone-cold penalty or something's gone wrong. This ref looks at it for 10 minutes and is re-watching the same clip and he wasn't even going to give it until a senior ref in VAR, Michael Oliver, you know. Um, if anybody knows about soccer or football, um, you can fathom your own opinions about him. I'm not going to do a rant about referees today. But you look afterwards and you just have people going mental, absolutely losing the, the, the rocker at the manager. Yeah, he's in a bad place at the moment, and whether he should get sacked or not, that's not what this video is about. Um, you know, personally, I think he's, uh, you know what I mean? He's kind of on a really short string, and it's looking like it's not going to end well, you know. But that's this is not what this video is about. But you had people online on Twitter and all that just rage baiting, going sack, 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 and doing loads of jokes and stuff like that, and then bring this family in the conversation as well, which is just disgraceful, I think. And like they've been posting pictures of him and his family, and it's just like, are you daft or on crack or something like that? And it's just like farming all these views and clicks and that. And the only people that are bringing up that injustice, that really bad decision, is actual journalists. You know, the ones that actually have some integrity and stuff like that. You know, they're actually bringing it up and wondering, like, you know, what's going on here? Why did he have to? Like, I thought VAR was for clear and obvious. And you just had all these people, just like loads of fake accounts and bots and crap like that, just farming and rage baiting and that. And yeah, it was just really, really pretty disgusting, really. It's just like, really? You can't just, you know, actually make a topic of engagement and that instead of just rage baiting people for views and farms and all that. It's just pretty annoying. And it's just kind of like, how is anyone meant to have a good topic conversation? And it makes me overly defensive on the opposite side when I'm more in the middle on this topic, like whether you should get sacked or not. And it's just really just so bizarre that now I'm forced right in the bang in the middle just because I absolutely dislike just rage baiting. So yeah, that's, that's the first example. Let's go on to the second one. Second example. Sorry if I'm a bit wet. I just had to go outside. <laughs> wet. <laughs> but yeah, um, I wanted to bring up this topic just because it's been sort of noticing a lot more with some of the trends this year. And just generally some channels like just increasing in size. Obviously isn't like one of those like, I'm so jealous. Because you know what I mean? People have um, bring lots of people on. If anyone's video makes anyone's day a bit better or is a bit more manageable, that's sick. That's great. Um, you know what I mean? So that's not to like go that sort of topic, but I've seen um, a lot of discourse, a lot about Bethesda at the moment. Now, at the moment, I'm on the fence again. <laughs> the same with the first example, because on one hand, I love Bethesda games. I've played almost every single one of them, except for like maybe the side project ones, and maybe, um, 
have tried Daggerfall. I, th- I think maybe like Arena and like some of the other ones, or was it left the, the Spire ones? Um, those are the ones I haven't played, but I have played like Daggerfall. But bef- after that, it's obviously Morrowind, Oblivion. My first entry was Morrowind into the franchise and then Fallout 3, which I still love some of the bits that they added to that. Um, some of the features like the random encounter system in Fallout 3. It's just amazing. The random generated. You could just go anywhere in Fallout 3, start up a new save, and something new comes out. You're just walking around a new experience, a new thing, which is just really cool in a video game. Um, with Oblivion, you got the, um, what's it called? The um, AI personality thing, um, where they all have their own little routines. And if you look at like, back of the footage when they, when they were releasing it, um, the AI was just running wild, doing all sorts of crazy stuff, and it was really, really impressive, and just something I still dream about them making in the game where they fully realise that idea, as well maybe adding like the Fallout 3 bit of it. Um, but yeah, they've always added something cool and gotten a bit ambitious with one feature, which is always a, a love I have for them when it comes to that. I wasn't so impressed with the generated content in Starfield, because um, I have a bit of a weird experience with that, which I might do a review of it someday. Um... Because I like I started off with that game, not so bothered um, at the minute release, and I played that like, the first ten hours of it, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is amazing! This is the biggest game ever!" And then I played like, um, well, until I played like over two hundred hours, maybe like two hundred and thirty or two hundred and forty. Um, I have on my save file on my Xbox, and I just had a totally different experience. I went from like you know going into it thinking you know, it's going to be all right. So it's always a 10 out of 10. And then I dropped down to like a 7 out of 10 just because of a lot of annoying features, which it's just too long to really go into. But my example I want to bring up is just I've seen a lot of channels that started off small in the last two, three years that have just made their content just just literally making videos, just having a go at the company and then just not adding anything to like to the actual topic or conversation, just hating on them just gaslighting them. And even worse, just going at individual developers like that, um, was it that Andrew Pelgrim, Pel- I can't remember his last name. Um, give me a sec. Emil Pegliarillo. Yeah, I got it right. That's him. I got it right. <laughs> um, but yes, I just feel like he gets so much hate when it's just like there's a massive studio of people working there and you can't just blame one dude. Um, for his thoughts on like, how to make a game, um, which a lot of people just um, so many videos with his face planted on, just blaming him like he's really gonna, he's really that powerful there. It's just like yes, do this this way, and suddenly everyone around him, even Todd Howard, is like yes, yes, ignore our own ideas. Like I mean, if you're gonna ask me my opinion on Bethesda at the moment, an issue they have is they took the wrong lessons from like Skyrim and. Um, and kind of not the correct lessons. And uh, I think what a good example of a YouTube that talks about this very well is Matty Plays. I feel like um, I have a huge respect for him as well. Um, such a great channel. And uh, obviously I love um, watching any sort of on news. Um, I mean, I like a good range of channels when it comes to gaming news. I mean, I didn't always follow Matty's um, channel. I think when like Fallout 4 hit, me and him probably had like different views on the game. Um, when when he started doing a lot of videos on it, because I didn't, I obviously I played for for completed it, did all the endings, and didn't have like four separate playthroughs. I did like two playthroughs, and then like a, a couple after that, multiple ones where I just kind of couldn't finish the game again. It's the way it is with Fallout, <laughs> and um, yeah, I just didn't really like it as much as like Fallout Three and um, New Vegas, because I particularly loved Fallout Three. And I also love Fallout New Vegas, like I always switch between them, but for me, Fallout 3 has just got such a good replayability without mods. Wherever um, wherever I play it on PC, I'm always playing Fallout New Vegas, just because Fallout 3 for me just never seems to work on PC, no matter how hard I try. Um, but yeah, I feel like he has a good topic, um, because I was recently watching a few of his videos, and he has a really good point um, where he was talking about the issue is they took the lesson that they... Nobody ever wants to finish the playthrough. No one ever wants to put the controller down. They want to live in this world where it's like, for a complete, uh, this is just speaking my, from my own thoughts right now, but as a completionist, he likes playing through it, getting the experience of the game, and then 
knowing that I finished it and then I can, you know, play it again and have a different sort of style thing. I think the real issue is they need replayability without the actual just endless rubbish. Um, you know what I mean? It's like if you play Dragon Age Inquisition and you keep like doing those re requisition um, requests that they give you by the, is it Hardin or whatever it is, or the requisition officer? If anybody knows what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> But um, I just feel like a lot of these people just love pointing out all their problems in, the, in every single game. We, like, ev like, there's, like there's just perfect games out there. I mean, I, I mean, here's going from a... It is listing a perfect company, right? FromSoft. FromSoft is an amazing company. Absolutely amazing. Some of my favorite games ever. Um, but they have got issues. Each game, you can come up with an issue... And something they improved upon. Um, I mean, like for example, quality of life features. If you compare, like, uh, um, what's a good example? Like Dark Souls Three to Dark Souls One, two different games, two different games. I mean, first from an example, Dark Souls Three is actually fully finished. Like Dark Souls One is finished, but if the the first half to the second half, two different games. You know what I mean? A lot of areas that just don't even look finished, like the Isolith area. That doesn't even look finished. Um, you could really go into topics about that. So it, it's, it's just really strange how when a company's really liked, people ignore certain issues with the previous thing. And then when they're in like, you know, the hot crap area, um, they're just like, yes, let's hate, let's hate on them. Let's do it. And then, you know, people can profit off that. You know, like we were saying with the previous example, um, this is so many videos going over the issue of actually adding a fix, except for beyond just stuff like, yes, make this, choose this. Whereas, like, I feel like just add an actual topic of conversation where it's just not you're blasting them for, like, hours and hours on end, like, just getting as many clicks. And obviously, I'm not judging every single YouTuber that this is them or anything like that. You're right to point out issues. I could make an hour-long video easy just pointing out bit by bit with my issues with Starfield because I was really left disappointed by the end of it. Um, is it a bad game? No. Is it a game that's um, not to my super taste by the end of it? It's just not got that replayability factor for me. Like, it's, And I think what really killed it off for me was um, the new game plus. I just thought that was absolutely badly done. Um, it just made it seem so exciting with all these added or changes and stuff like that. And then you go in and you just fed into the same sort of conversation where you can't change any sort of things apart from like a snarky comment from you. Um, the backgrounds don't do anything. I mean, you can make yourself, um, is it R Rulhan or Ran, whatever it is, like the snake people sort of culture. Um you know, Andrejas, Andrejas, Andrejas people. Um, you could be a part of that culture and then you're having a romance with her or a conversation with her as a friend and she acts like you're not a part of that, no matter even though you are, like, part of that culture and that. The fact that you can get uh, married in a game or and your family can't be invited to that if you have that perk. It was just a lot of stuff that's just thrown in as filler and not fully, like, done. But obviously, I don't want to start making this sort of a rage thing because it makes me a hypocrite. <laughs> but as you can see, it's like a can of worms I could open and just start going in about. But I don't want this channel to be like that. Um, this isn't super judgmental towards those people as much as like Twitter people because I, I despise Twitter, so I'm, I hate Twitter every single day and <laughs> night. <laughs> but I just feel like some YouTube channels could maybe take a bit of a back step and maybe, you know, it maybe work on the delivery. You know what I mean? Like work on like adding something like um like the example with Matt he plays. I feel like he adds a very good topic because recently he's been a little bit negative towards Bethesda, which is slightly different than what he is. He's always quite a positive attitude in the I'd say in the gaming community. And um obviously long may that continue. And uh, obviously if he ever does watch this, I don't think he would it's like a small YouTube channel. But um I love your videos, man, and obviously keep up the sick work, pal. Um, but yeah, um, I just feel like he adds a good, a good bit of, you know what I mean? Feedback, actual feedback they can look at and just go, yeah, that's something we fix rather than it just being like, this game feature isn't here and this isn't here, this isn't here. Um, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and a lot of dread deeming as well with Elder Scrolls 6 coming around the corner. 
Um, like they do with a lot of games, to be honest, um, these days. I mean, Dragon Age Inquisition, um, for me, I hated that game. <laughs> I love the main quest. I love the companions, the actual design of it all around. I didn't like it at all. I hated it, hated the combat, hated the landscapes that never ended, all the filler quests. Um, uh, but the new game's coming out, Dragon Age Vanguard. Is it Vanguard? And I'm really excited for it. But I already see people just... It's like you're just wishing for it to fail. You know what I mean? Like, give them a chance. Like, you can't tell me Anthem was like some, you know, wasn't EA going, <laughs> come on, make make the live service model for us. You know you want to make a game like that. You know what I mean? Like, they forced uh, multiplayer into Mass Effect 3. So, like, maybe give them a bit of rest, give them a break. I know they had a lot of the developers, like, leave um, Bioware. Um, but you got to remember, it's EA. EA have buggered a lot of companies. Look at Dead Space 2, how good that was. And then you got Dead Space 3. And that has, like, forced multiplayer. you got to remember that they, they're owned by a bunch of absolute clowns. And that isn't, that isn't rage baiting. That's just explaining what EA are. Um, my third example, if I remember it correctly, is I just feel there's a lot of um, just real, you know, just bad... This isn't really more like a topic. This is more like news at this point. There's just a lot of um, channels in general that are just absolutely built and triggering people. This isn't like to do with the topics previously. This is just to do with actual like just waiting for any sort of bad news or bad thing to just go in on people straight away before you even hear the full story. Um, but obviously there are some people like degenerates out there that should get absolutely rinsed on. Like, I remember I was watching a short clip recently with, like, um, I, I love um, Penguin Zero, um, Z Zero, <laughs> all of his videos, and I was watching a quick short that appeared with somebody, like, um, just just writing rubbish as the caption, like, you know, made a short based off his reaction to a comment, when it was like a commenter just going on about Dr. Disrespect and how he's innocent, and it's just kind of like, the guy admitted, the guy admitted to it, <laughs> Talk, talking to someone underage, like, how much more evidence do you need? The guy admitted to it. <laughs> uh, and, and and then the caption was like saying, um, Charlie gets overraged at this comment when he was actually quite calm and chilled. And it's just annoying. It's just so many like accounts, like, just make some original content, man. Um, obviously that's not in a derogatory term to anyone. I just mean like, come on, man, chill out. Like, I mean, for example, you know what I mean? I'm not saying I'm a huge channel. I'm definitely not a huge channel, but I want at least the content I make to at least be original. Like I will do a few jokes and try a few ideas out and stuff like that, but I try and at least be original. And it just seems to be a lot of copy and paste. Plus, just rage baiting, outrageous titles. Like, I've done some outrageous titles, you know what I mean? <laughs> but not to, like, to the extremes. Like, half the time it's sarcastic, which I, I'm just a very sarcastic person. Um, and actually, I've got a video coming out soon where I just, you know, take the mick out on an executive decision behind the Warcraft film. Um, but half the time it's just satire. And it really, you know what I mean? If if I, if I do make a video like that, I always put the warning, it's satire. But a lot of it, it just seems like just people just trying to rage bait, going on people, um, or just really just trying to trigger people. It's kind of like in pop-up ads, you know what I mean? You start going like that, it says, watch it, watch it. I know, copy and paste. I just write a caption, watch it. And it's just kind of like, where's the delete button on this? Just to click it out of my sight, you know what I mean? Half the time I'm scrolling through rubbish. Like, half the time, there's a lot of good shorts channels on YouTube and that which I quite like watching, you know what I mean? I'm watching a lot of stuff on YouTube. I just I just really like YouTube in general. Um, I mean, on my private one, I, I've got a premium, which I haven't got on my actual YouTube channel, which some people, I don't know if there's any benefits to that, I don't know. But um, I, I just like watching YouTube a lot for multiple stuff and... Um, yeah, I just feel like there's just a lot of oversaturation of it. And I think the, the new just these days, new genre, is just really rage baiting. And uh... so, yes, I also want to talk about why rage baiting has become so popular, which uh, 
I think it's a pretty quick and easy answer. We live in a world these days where there's a lot of things to just complain about or get angry about. I mean, if when you look how lucky we are compared to like past generations, like, you know what I mean? I think everything's just very, what's the word? State, so stable, in fact, you know, even though there's quite a lot of chaos and trouble going on in the world. It's just a lot of things that people can just have the time to get annoyed about and they're frustrated about. I mean, the fact that you can get annoyed about a video game these days, I mean, you compare that to probably old troubles, what people could easily get annoyed about. Like, I mean, there's one point like over a hundred years ago when people could only boil like stuff. You know what I mean? Imagine eating boiled chicken every single day. I'd be pretty mad. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, so... With these days, a lot of people will have a lot in their mind. So when you're like looking online or on YouTube or anything like that, and you see something that's, you know, outrage or anger that's not in the middle, not not like what's the word, trying to be sort of transparent and sort of look at it from both sides, because it's so easy to just look at stuff in like you know black and white when there's really a lot of grey in the world. Oh, let me turn that notification off. But yeah, like a lot of people don't want to hear like, you know, an explanation a lot of the time. They don't want to hear, you know, someone like going, you know, talking from both sides. But though there's quite a lot of content that's also does it that side, which I quite like watching. So, I'm, you know, it's not 100 percent all the time. People don't want to watch that. I just it's just a lot more attractive to just get annoyed about something, click on a video and have somebody tell you in explicit detail all the problems, all the issues or everything. And then, and then by that point, you've gotten so infused with the thing, it doesn't even matter whether they actually have a solution or an answer or an expert, you know, like a real thing. They've just got you then. They've hooked you, whether it's on a video, whether it's a tweet, whether it's even a newspaper. I mean, there's, there's a lot of journalists that are just uh, pretty much online bloggers at this point. I know offense to all of them, there's still a lot of good journalists out there which just get overshadowed by the amount of absolutely horrendous ones. Like, you wonder why you get a degree. Like you study for a degree when you're just pretty much an online vlogger at that point. I mean, it's no offense to online vloggers, but the actual online vloggers, at least they're honest about it. And don't, you know, put new, you know, put facts as, you know, like, you know what I mean? Portray it as facts and really it's just your opinion or even better, just, 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 a, just a topic or an article or a name or something like that. Just a draw in numbers, just a draw in views. It's just pretty irritating really. And so, like, when you can just easily make a channel or make a video or make a tweet and it can just trigger and bring in all those sort of, you know, views or stuff like that, even, like, people get outraged about it will click on it. You know what I mean? People even against that. It's caught me enough times, you know what I mean? There's enough times I see something that I disagree with and I'll just click on it going, what the hell is going on right here? And and, and me just being silly and realising, damn, they've got me. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, there's so much good content out there you could probably watch instead. Um, you know, Shuke, not sure. <laughs> Started doing a quick shout in my own video. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's a lot of good content out there, and I feel like a lot of that just sort of loses appeal when you could just have someone just, just blast something that you don't like without actually really going through it, or, or even if they do do a good, I mean, there's some good videos that really do go through the negatives and the thing. I just believe that, like, if you're going to list so much stuff, then by that point, you must have a pretty good um, explanation of how they can fix it somehow, or at least try and mend it, or go in the right step. I mean, it doesn't even have to be a full round one 360 fix. Just a step forward, you know what I mean? And, um... Uh, yeah, so it's just very easy to make a video like that, get a lot, big big pump of views, because I've noticed a lot of accounts in the last two years, um, or probably three years, because, you know, everyone during COVID was watching YouTube, using on the internet more, and you just notice a lot more of, like, channels that used to be, like, even though I see now, I see a channel, I can't, I'm not going to name them, but they had, like, 2,000 views, like, three years ago, and now they've jumped up and like almost every single one of their video is just having to go at some sort of person or topic or anything like that. And it's just like, really, pal? Like, really? That's 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 your gist? Yeah, 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 I can, you know, you watch the videos, give them a chance and they're just, just pure criticism and no like 
<clears throat> like help or any sort of suggestions or anything like that. No actual positive critique. Was it positive critique or is it like helpful, helpful critique? You know what I mean? One of those things. Like it, you know what I mean? It's like, it's easy enough for me to just start going through a list of stuff that annoys me about society and not have an answer for how to fix it or, and then just go, oh, well, that's your job. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like, like it's your, like for some reason, this high and mighty person's job is to, to just throw all the rubbish in the face rather than me, rather than listing the thing they do well about it. Um, it's just really, really just one of those things, like, it's easy money. Now, you know, to not be a hypocrite, I've got to give, like, you know what I mean? How can you help, you know, what can you really, you know, offer instead? How could you change it? Now, that is a very long-worded answer. Luckily, I can chat a lot of rubbish. <laughs> but really, I feel like it's just a bit of management with the way you progress a video. Like, add a bit of, like, sequenced um, answers to the stuff you put out there. Don't just do it where, like, you've gone through something for, like, 20 minutes and then, like, you've spent one minute having an answer. I mean, it might end up with this video. I don't know. I haven't properly looked at the time. I had a little timer, you know, going, stop watching. Go. And it's like, go. No. Just get started. Get started. Speak. Speak. No. No. Oh, you failed it. You failed it. <laughs> no. Uh, no, it's it, it's not like that. Um, Like, just have a bit of, you know what I mean? Have a bit of a mix of it. Have a bit of an equal sort of share of it. I mean, there's a lot of answers to a lot of, um, you know, critiques, you know what I mean? Like, um, like, what was a good one for me that I was bringing up before, like Bethesda? Like, learn to, like, keep on going, keep on, actually, you know, here's one thing. Like, I could have listed the complaint about, like, the procedural generation, but knowing Bethesda, they probably will drop it for the next game after that. Because, you know, they, you know, it's, a, it's just, you know, it's a professor thing. They work on something really brand new that they put a lot of time into. And if it doesn't sort of work, you know, they sort of drop it. And sometimes they bring it on to the next game and later on in the, like maybe 10 years and that and improve upon it somehow. And so, yeah, like, they, like realistically, it's not something I really should say. Because I know for a fact what Bethesda is like. Because I've played enough of their games. I could list enough features from their games that sort of like will miss a step and come, you know, and that will, you know, will miss a game and then come back a couple of years later. Like you could put so many parallels with like Daggerfall and Starfield. Like for me, a lot of people say it's a lot like Oblivion. For me, he's a big Oblivion lover. It isn't. Um, it is very much a Daggerfall. Um, it's like all, a lot of the ideas from Daggerfall have been improved upon in Starfield. So if you're like a big dagger fan from back then, I reckon you could really love Starfield, especially like sci-fi. I mean, I, that's what got me into Starfield was the sci-fi aspect, even though I absolutely hated the procedural generation after like the same planet or the same cave, the same like mission era, area. Um, like it was just kind of like uh, a system that in maybe like 10 years or 20 years, is going to get improved upon and really show itself to be uh, really remarkable. I just feel like this is the first big attempt. Um, I mean, not not the hugest attempt. So no, 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 not exactly the first attempt, I mean, if you count Daggerfall's procedural generation. But when it comes to realistically what we can do now with technology, it is their first attempt with it. And so, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, that's probably a bad example to put out. But realistically, sort of semi like that, I mean... You could um, add that answer to a video if you were going on to complain about the procedural generation because it's most likely going to get skipped for the next game and probably the next game after that. And it'll get worked on a couple of years later. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's quite a few features I'd love for him to bring back. Um, like the Fallout 3's um, random encounter system. It's one of the best in gaming, in my opinion, when it comes to a system and a feature I absolutely adore. Um, which they can improve upon tenfold. And uh, you've got like um, Oblivion, which I said before, with the AI like personality, really. Um, which, honestly, the intelligence the AI showed back then, so obviously what the final product was, is obviously light years. 
But originally, if they could manage to improve upon that and really like add it to a game, oh my, they could possibly win awards for like technology, like you know, like the t what's it called, a tech award. Because if they could create AI like that, I mean, the only sort of thing I could really compare it to that would even be as good, um, that's, that's probably on the same level, is probably like Alien Isolation, but it's a totally different AI. And it's one alien, whereas like if you could have all these characters and NPCs with this with whole lifestyle, their own decision making, they're not in a set routine or a pattern, and, they, and, they, and they're not going absolutely crazy ape, you know what I mean? Like that was the issue with the original AI in Oblivion. Um, was that it would just go around killing each other, robbing off each other, and just causing like mass instigation where you'd have the guards killing everyone and just having like a dead game, um, which obviously they had to tone down a bit. But if they could really add structure onto that and improve upon it, like damn, they have got a banging game straight away. And um, <clears throat> yeah, like really, that's that's how I'd say. Like you know what I mean? Just add a problem. You know, name a problem if you're going to do it this way as a solution. Um, and if you're just going to be repeating the same rubbish, just farming views, then you're not really adding anything to the discussion. You're just farming views. You're copying and pasting other people's work, which is probably going to be a lot more better at your work. Like, I'm not here, I'm not here like, making videos like, like, you know what I mean, copying other people's work and doing it much badly. Like, you know what I mean? I may take certain, like... Um, What's the word? Like some sort of idea. So like for example, when I was doing Dark Souls, I added certain episodes where that in Dark Souls 3 where I'd add music on some of the stuff and just have it like a bit more faster, do the battles and then have like a hooray. Or some of them, like I'm getting chased by someone and I turn around and it's like a little slow like freeze and it's like a scream or something like that. Just because that's stuff I like, you know what I mean? It was very funny to me. Like I was watching back in some of my old the Dark Souls 3 videos and I wish I'd sort of like want to do that again with some of the games, but like it's like with Dark Souls 2, the moment we did one episode, but I still need to record what well, they edit the next one and obviously do another stream. But I wanted to do something different because obviously it's original and it's something I would like, you know what I mean? Which I'm experimenting with long form videos at the moment just because I quite like it. I like having something you put down and you're doing something else and you're just listening along. And you have a little glimpse when it's something interesting on. I mean, it won't be the same forever, but it'll be something different. And when I do get around to it, I might do something similar like I did with Dark Souls 3 videos. Um, just like I'm doing something with the film videos and the TV shows just because I really was interested and I wanted to try it. I mean, this is going very off topic, but it's just really just be original and if you haven't got an, an actual thought to bring to the process because i'm sure there's plenty of better done videos about this topic out there i'm sure of it but this is just a unique point of view opinion rather than it just being spread out five minutes just going you know f all the rage baiters they're all useless and all sorts of rubbish like that um you know what i mean which you could just find on a twitter post somewhere um so hopefully um yeah Hopefully that sort of answers that. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. But yeah, if you like the video, if you think I should talk more about it, is there any questions or maybe you disagree with me, might, you know, I don't mind having you know, a civil conversation with anybody, you know what I mean? Not like I'm just going to be like, ban, delete, get away, or start insulting you. Like, you know what I mean? I always, you know, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, you know what I mean? Um, but if anyone's got anything to say, you know, leave a comment, man. I always appreciate chatting to anyone. And, um, you know, if you like the video or you like the channel, please give us a subscribe and a like. But, yeah, I hope you all have a sick day, an amazing week, an even greater year. And thanks for watching again. Bye. Emil, Pele Pe Emil Peg Peglia Rule. Uh, Emil Pe Pe Peglia Rule. Oh, 